Pankers lives a quiet and unassuming village in Barnsley, but somewhere in these fields it was a site of a civil war battle. So join me as we look at this part of Yorkshire's hidden history. Churches, battles, kings and queens, factories and big machines, castles, forts and in-betweens, the stories that are told. The best way to think about the civil wars in Yorkshire is basically as a huge game of Tom and Jerry between two commanders. There's Sir Thomas Fairfax and his father, who commanded the Parliamentarians, and William Cavendish, Duke of Newcastle, who commanded the Royalists. Now, I know that's technically three people, but bear with me. They were constantly chasing each other around Yorkshire and fighting, and they had loads of battles, a lot of which I've covered already in my other videos. Our story starts with the Battle of Seacroft Moor on the 30th of March 1643. Fairfax had been roundly beaten and so naturally Cavendish would want to capitalise on that. He made Wakefield his base and from there started to expand into South Yorkshire. We know this because Thomas Fairfax sent a letter to his father telling him that parliamentarians in Peniston were requesting help as there were royalists in Barnsley. Now at this time, areas like Sheffield and Rotherham were largely pro-Parliament, and so naturally Cavendish would want to campaign there. It's important to note, however, that not everyone in this area was pro-Parliament. Sir Francis Wortley, of Wortley, was a staunch supporter of Charles I, as was Thomas Wentworth of Wentworth Woodhouse, who ended up being executed by Parliament in one of the most notorious events leading up to the war. Sir Francis Wortley had his own troop of dragoons at Tankersley and was one of the four people who raised the King's standard at Nottingham, effectively starting the Civil War. He himself would fight in the battle at Tankersley. Anyway, we only have one account of the battle and this comes from Newcastle's wife. She tells us that in pursuit of that victory, my lord sent a considerable party into the west of Yorkshire, where they met with 2,000 of the enemy's forces, taken out of their several garrisons in those parts, to execute some design upon a moor called Tankersley Moor, and there fought them and routed them. Many were slain and some taken prisoners. One of the reasons we know it happened at Tankersley is because people have found musket balls and cannonballs in the area. Some of them are kept here at the parish church, but unfortunately I can't show you them because it's locked. Now unfortunately that's all we've got to go on, so we've got to use imagination a bit. Now if there's 2,000 parliamentarians alone and however many royalists, this isn't just a tiny skirmish, this is quite a big battle, so you've got to imagine all the gunfire and the smoke and the shouting, there's hundreds of people who've died and the rest have fled for their lives, this is a tumultuous battle which would have scarred the local landscape. Okay, so what did this battle actually mean? Well, it was actually quite significant. With the parliamentarians defeated, they were now weaker than ever before and Cavendish was free to continue his campaigns in South Yorkshire. He set his sights on Sheffield and Rotherham and because there were so few parliamentarians left to defend them, both of them fell easily. Rotherham was partially defended by grammar school boys and whatever volunteers they could find and Sheffield was captured without a fight. When the defenders saw the royalists coming, they simply ran away. So you've got to wonder, if Tankersley hadn't have happened, and there were now thousands of parliamentarian soldiers available, would the Civil War have taken a slightly different course? Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you again soon.